If you're at home right now, I want to ask you to do something with me. Just stand up where you're at. Here in the audience, we have a few people. Can you stand up with me? And um, don't miss next week. It's going to be powerful. Pastor Marco is kicking it off next week. We're so excited for that. But I really believe, if you're at home right now, again, just stand up for a second. I really believe, as, even as the worship team began to worship, the presence of God right now is in your home. You know what? Can you say that? You're at home right now. I want you to say this. Say this. The presence of God is in my home. I just seen like chains breaking off in people's homes when you said that. Say that again. The presence of God is in my home. Now give the Lord a big shout of praise if you believe that. The Lord is in your home. I have a word from God today. I sought God the last couple of days, and, you know, I don't take this moment lightly. For the ones that I haven't met, uh, again, th those that are watching for the first time, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm the associate pastor, Pastor Robert, and God gave me a word, and this is the title. Remain standing at your house for a second. Trust in God when things are not making sense. I don't know what you're going through right now. Maybe you just lost a loved one. Maybe you're a business owner and your business is struggling. I'm here to give you some good news that God is for you. He is not against you. God loves you. He knows what you're going through. And all we have to do is place our trust in God. At home right now, let's bow our head and let's close our eyes. Here in the audience, let's do the same. Father, we thank you for this wonderful night you've given us, God. A night, Lord, where we stabilize our trust in you God things that don't make any sense right now we're trusting in you God even losing a loved one we've had people that have lost loved ones it doesn't make any sense your word father God tells us that your peace surpasses all understanding and Lord we place our trust in you it doesn't matter the circumstance, Lord. You're right there with us. You're walking with us in this storm. And we are going to make it out. We are going. I declare right now in your home, you will make it out. You're watching. Maybe you're driving right now. I declare right now, you will make it out. Father, we thank you. As we deliver this word today, Holy Spirit, speak through me. And let us learn how we could trust in you. doesn't matter the circumstance. doesn't matter what we're going through. That we could trust in you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You could be seated right where you're at. Again, tonight's title, Trust in God. When things are not making sense. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what problem that's before you right now. I don't know what tribulation you're facing. I have good news. God is for you. He's going to see you through. Here's our opening scripture, Psalms 91.2. If you have your Bibles there at home, if not, you have your phones or your tablets, turn to this first scripture, Psalms 91.2. Again, the title, Trust in God when things are not making sense. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust. You know, to make that statement, trust God, I think is an easy statement to make, but it's another thing to live it out. It's another thing to believe and really trust in God. You know, trusting in God is easy when, when things are going great and um, we call it kind of like the, the mountain high experience, but we have those low moments. You know, right before service, um, probably around 4 o'clock or so, I, I got some news that one of our local pastors here in San Bernardino, Pastor Victor, his wife had just got murdered. One of our members, Michael, he let me know about it. He goes, man, can you reach out to the pastor? I said, of course. I called Pastor Victor. He has a church just two blocks away from our Arrowhead campus. And I called him. I said, Pastor, I heard your wife died. Can you tell me the story? And he began to tell me that his daughter was, was being abused by an ex-boyfriend. And the mom went out there, his wife went to go stop the fight. And when she went out there, the boyfriend stopped abusing his daughter. Then she ran in the house. And this guy had a gun. He goes into the house and kills his wife. They were together for over 35 years. I think it was 40 years or so. And I said, Pastor, how, 
How are you getting through this? He said, Pastor, it has not been easy. I've been sometimes crying myself to sleep. But even in the midst of this trial, he told me, even in the midst of this tragedy, he told me this, I will trust in God. I will trust in what God is doing. He said, I can't understand the whole situation but even in the last few weeks, God is reaching my family that is not saved. God is reaching my friends because I got a, I got a new compassion for those that have lost their loved ones. And when I was talking to him, I was trying to encourage him and he was encouraging me. And Pastor Victor, I want to give a shout out. Pray for anyone listening. Pray for Pastor Victor. But maybe your situation is not that dire. Maybe your situation is not that, 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 that intense doesn't matter what you're going through a lot of us when we're going through something it's the biggest thing in the world and God knows what you're going through and the Bible says in the scripture that God is our fortress that we could run to him in those times of need that we could run to God and I'm letting you know like I said it earlier God is going to see you through see in the midst of a trial in the midst of a hard time the enemy will try to shift our trust. He'll try to shift our faith. The Bible describes it this way in Psalms 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. In other words, the scripture is saying some will put their trust in different things. Maybe you're watching us today and you've put your trust in your job. Maybe you've put your trust in your finances. Maybe you've put your trust in a relationship. Maybe you've put your trust in maybe an education. Maybe you've put your trust maybe in a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Those things and those people at times will let us down. But I'm talking about a God today that the word of God describes, I will be with you. I will not forsake you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. I got you, son. I got you, daughter. And I proclaim it even right now in the homes. You're watching right now and you're going through some things. You're not understanding what's going on. And God is saying, I got you, son. I, I got you, daughter. Don't let your trust shift into different things. I don't know about you, but throughout life, I put my faith in or my trust in different things, in relationships. And how many know relationships sometimes will let us down? Here's a, here's a really good fact, a really good statement to write down. Write this statement down. Anytime we place our trust in something other than God, we will be let down or disappointed. Anytime we place our trust in something other than God, we will be disappointed. Only God and him alone can we trust. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Everything in this earth is going to pass away. The Bible describes Everything we're seeing one day is going to pass away. But God's word will pass the test every time. That's why when you're going through a trial, you're going through a situation that you can't comprehend, get a word from the Lord. Because when you get a word from the Lord, God's word will not let us down. We could trust in the Lord. Give the Lord a big shout of praise there in your house. Say, yes, I trust in the Lord because anywhere else where we put our faith anywhere else where we put our trust those very things will let us down but God will never let us down never let us down doesn't matter what you're facing today God will never let you down I want to give you a few facts really quick here's a few facts here's a few benefits of those who put their trust in God Write this down. Here's a few facts. Here's a few benefits when you trust in God. Here's number one. There is always divine help when we trust in God. I'm going to say that again. There is always divine help when we trust in God. That word divine means this. Directly from God. It means the miraculous. See, we begin to experience miracles when we trust in God. We get divine help. Man, just thinking about this church. 
You know, it's the, the pandemic's been going on since what? Last March. We're coming up in a year, just in a few months. This is a miracle that the church is still going and not still going. It's expanding and growing. Look at this year. We purchased the Hallmark Building. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Because when we trust in God, there's divine assistance. There's divine help. Finances in the church. I just thought about it today or when I was, I actually helped out with the offering. And I was thinking about it. I said, man, we haven't passed an offering basket in about seven or eight months. And last year, 2020, our finances went up. How does that happen? That's divine help. That's the miraculous hand of God. Those who put their trust in God will get divine help. How many need divine help right now? Raise your hand. You're at home right now. You need divine help right now. You need divine wisdom right now. You need divine guidance right now. You need divine assistance with your children right now. Your children are not serving God. Just place and hold your trust in God. Because when we trust in God, divine help is there. Psalms 28.7 describes this. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. And he helps me. My heart leaps for joy. And with my song, I praise him. See, there's an overwhelming joy there's an overwhelming peace that comes among people who place their trust in God. See, I've been there before. Things don't make any sense. Things are not working out as planned. And I get stressed out. Does anybody get stressed out every so often? Where does stress come from? Stress comes from not depending and trusting in God. I stress when I put matters in my own hands. I stress when I'm trying to figure everything out. I thank God I don't have to figure everything out because Robert is not that smart. But I do know one thing. I receive divine help when I trust in God. You're a business owner. You need divine help. Trust in God. Don't trust in this person or, or, or that organization. And yeah, organizations are great. People are great. But something about people, way different from God, people are very fickle. They'll bless you one day and curse you the next day. <laughs> people are fickle. Oh, pastor, I'll be there at 5 o'clock. And they show up at 5.30 or don't even call. And that's all of us. We've been there at times. I thank God that he's a man of his word. Everything he says will come to pass. So if the Lord is telling me that he's going to give me divine help, if I trust in him, I want to place my trust in him. What does that word trust mean? Write this down. It's a firm belief in the reliability how many know that God is reliable? How many are thankful that God is reliable? Again, that word trust, firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something to cling on to, to put all confidence in. I, I'm thankful that I could place all my confidence in God. I could place all my trust in God. I could put my family in the Lord's hands. I could put my marriage in the Lord's hands. I could place my business. I could place the ministry in God's hands. Now, right now, we're seeing divine miracles even on the streets right now. If you notice the, the, the shirt that I'm wearing, we, we went along with Pastor Mark Osteen and we made a shirt that says this, reach the one. This is Adopt the Block's new t-shirt. We're seeing divine blessings already on the street. We just started hitting the streets of Pomona. It's official. We are launching a church in Pomona. Grand opening day, June 27th. 
And we're starting to see the miraculous hand of God because we're trusting God for the city. So the other day I spoke to the mayor of Pomona and I told him, I, I said, Mayor Tim Sandoval, we're coming into the city. God has called us into the city and I really believe that there's going to be favor there and, and we're here to help you any way that we can. So the other day he calls me, I think it was on Tuesday, he, he sends me a text and he sends me a text of 16 families, names, phone numbers, and addresses. So I text the mayor back, I said, what's this list for? He goes, well, didn't you tell me that you wanted to maybe help with distributing food for the needy families? I said, oh yeah, of course, yeah, we told you that. He goes, well, can you come today? And I was like at 7 o'clock in the morning when I got the text. So I text the team, I said, oh my gosh, I got to go to Pomona right now. When we first started the church, and even now, we're going to knock on doors until Jesus comes back. But Pastor Marco said, it, he, when I called him, he said, see, these churches we're going to start now, it, some of it, some of it is going to be a tad easier. Now, I got a mayor that's texting me 16 needy families. And he tells me, can you take food? I said, of course I could take food. And I asked him, well, can I pray for them? He goes, yeah, you can do whatever you want. I said, are you sure? He goes, yeah, do whatever you want. I said, how about the names and phone numbers and addresses? Do I give them back to you after I'm done? He goes, no, keep them. They're yours. I said, you're giving me 16 families? See, God begins to work miraculous things and things that are divine, things that doesn't make any sense when we trust in God. When our trust is in God, get ready. Divine help comes our way. Here's another thing. When we trust in God, write this down. There's always victory. You will always experience victory when you trust in God. First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 20. Just a brief history. This is the Israelites. They're fighting a group that's called the Hagrites. And they're fighting them and things are going okay. But then they do something a little bit different. They begin to pray. And they began to trust in God like never before. Look what happens in 1 Chronicles 5.20 with the Israelites in the middle of a war and fighting. 1 Chronicles 5.20. They were helped. What happened? They were helped. Who was helped? The people of Israel. There was divine help in fighting them. And God delivered the Hagrites and all their allies into their hands. Because why? Because they cried out to him during the battle. He answered their prayers because they trusted in him. The battle was won when they began trusting in God. Your battle is already won when you place your trust in God. Pastor, I don't see nothing happening. It doesn't matter if you see anything happening. Just trust in God because victory comes to those who place their faith in God. I love this statement. Write this down if you're taking notes. Let me see, yeah, write this. The enemy stays defeated when we trust in God. See, the enemy is already defeated. God defeated him. Jesus defeated him on the cross. He's already defeated. Soon as he left heaven, he's already defeated. The enemy stays defeated when we trust in God. So whatever circumstance you're facing... Be careful, the enemy will try to shift your trust this way, and shift your faith this way. Keep it in the Lord. Keep it on his word. And some of you guys right now are going through a tragedy. When I spoke to Victor, man, I, I just lost it after that phone call. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. That a pastor's wife gets murdered in her own home. Couldn't fathom it. And God says, I'm doing something there with the family. This may look like a tragedy. Yes, it's a tragedy, but I'm still moving. I'm still moving in that family. Souls are going to get saved because of this. And it doesn't matter what you're going through, place your faith in God. So I gave you a couple benefits. And for the sake of time now, let me give you a couple prayers that will build your trust. So I gave you a couple benefits. Divine help comes to those who place their trust in God. Those that put their trust in God have victory. Let me give you a couple prayers that help build your trust. Number one, here's a prayer that you and I could pray in the middle of a storm, things you don't understand. Here's a good prayer. Lord, help me to obey you 
even when I don't understand. Man, that's a great prayer. Lord, help me to obey you even when I don't understand. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own ways. Lean not on your own thinking. Do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways, submit to him, submit to God, and he will make your paths straight. Trust in God. Trust and obey, even when it makes no sense. I remember when God told me to, to leave my job as we're starting the church. It didn't make any sense. How many know that God will ask you to do something a lot of times and it makes absolute no sense? Let me tell you why it made no sense. The Lord said, okay, it's time to leave your job. I said, I don't have any money in the bank account. That alone, that makes no sense. Who's going to pay my bills? The church just started, but I was hearing God saying, it's time for you to go. Me and Pastor, me and Pastor Mark went and met. It's time for you to go first. It's time for you to let go of your job. And I remember that day I went to my wife and we had just got married. That's another good reason why it, was, it wasn't a good thing. I just got married. No money in the account and God is saying it's time to leave your job. Doesn't make any sense. I like this statement. This is, this is good. Write this down. This is good. This will change your life. You don't have to understand completely to obey immediately. Man, that's a good statement. We should make that into a t-shirt. You don't have to understand completely to obey immediately. I didn't have to understand how God was going to provide for that job. I just had to obey immediately. So I did my very best. I prayed. I cried. Me and my wife, I remember, we were in Redlands in the apartment. And I just started to cry. I said, Lord, okay, I'm leaving. I don't understand. I, but I'm going to obey you anyhow. I trust in you, God. My life is in your hands. My wife, you gave her to me. This place, you gave it to me. The car that I drive, you gave it to me, God. And I was there praying. And I heard that kind of like divine moment, that miraculous moment. I heard the word sponsor while I was laying there with my wife just on the floor praying. And I woke up. I told my wife, honey, I heard the word sponsor. She said, what does that mean? I said, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to get sponsored or something? I don't have a clue. So that day I went to the job. Didn't make any sense. I said, hey, you guys, you guys know we started the church. And I was working at the car business at the time. I said, hey, today's my last day. It's time to go. And the guys were like, time to go? What do you mean? I said, it's time to go, man. The church is growing. Things are moving. This is my last day. I, I got to go. I've heard from God. I, I've talked to Pastor Mark. I, it, it's time to go. I got to go. And they went and they, I remember one of the managers, he pulled up an old check of mine that I hit like some bonuses and he showed it to me. He said, Robert, you'll be a fool if you leave this company because you'll never see this money ever again. You'll be a fool to leave this company. I said, well, call me a fool. I don't know. Maybe I am a fool. I don't know yet. <laughs> because how many know when God asks, you're just walking it out. You're walking it out. So, man, I left there, and I was crying. I, was, I, was, I don't know what's going to happen. I called my wife, and she goes, what's going on? I said, I quit. And the church didn't, didn't have any money, and there's nothing there. On the way home, I get a call from my cousin. He calls me. He goes, hey, I heard you quit your job. I said, yeah, I did. He said, man, just a few minutes ago, the Lord told me to sponsor one of your bills. I said, there it goes, sponsor. I got it now. I got it. I said, you'll sponsor a bill. You sure? Put that in writing. I said, send me a fax. Send me an email. That was old school. Send me a fax. Put that in writing. I hang up. So now I'm kind of itching, waiting for another call. Isn't that good? Because divine blessings and miracles come. So then all of a sudden, another person calls. Hey, I'll cover this. Hey, I'll let you use the car. By the time I got home, all my bills were 100% sponsored. Help us, Lord, to obey even when we don't understand. Because when you obey God, even when you don't understand, the miraculous hand of God is there. Divine blessings come our way. So, Lord, help me to obey you. Man, when I don't understand. Here's another good second prayer you could pray. Lord, help me to surrender what I cannot control. Lord, help me to surrender everything to you. 
especially those things I can't control. You're out there right now. You can't control. You work for a business, they go bankrupt. You can't control that. If you're just an employee, you can't control that. Your friend is sick at the hospital. Yeah, we could pray, but you can't control what's happening there. Someone leaves you in a relationship. Can't control that unless, unless you did something crazy and it left you, but can't control that. There's things in life that we can't control. <laughs> I remember when I got sick. It was out of my hands. I, I couldn't control it. I couldn't swallow. For the ones that know my story, I got really sick years back. I couldn't swallow my food. Man, it was horrible. I couldn't, it got to the point where I couldn't even swallow water. I lost 30, 40 pounds and being rushed to the ER, choking on my food. And it was out of my control. I couldn't go in my esophagus and just open it up. I had to let it go and surrender it to God. I remember people were saying, go try this and go try that. I remember one day I went to Chinatown. They said, go to Chinatown. They got everything in Chinatown. So, man, I was just going here and going there, running here. And I remember I went to Chinatown. They made me a, a shake. They mixed up a bunch of weeds and grass. And, okay, he goes, this will work. It'll just, it'll just open up your esophagus. Drink it. Man, I got that drink. I couldn't even swallow an inch of that, or a little centimeter. I said, sir, this ain't going to work. And on my way back from Los Angeles, from Chinatown, God says, are you finished? Surrender it to me completely. I know you're running here, you're running there. Just surrender. This is out of your control. You got to put this in my hands. And God began to heal me. The doctors call us, we could do a surgery right now. We'll fix them up. And here I am today. I know we're fasting, but pretty soon I'll be eating steaks pretty soon again. I'll be eating in and out in, in about a week and a half. And God began to move. But I had to say, Lord, help me surrender those things that I can't control. Because there's going to be a temptation to try to control the things that we can't control. There's always a temptation to try to control the things that we cannot control. 2 Timothy 1.5 is our last scripture. This is Paul. He's training up a... His new pastor, his new leader, Timothy, is a young guy in the faith, a young leader. So Paul, he begins to write Timothy, and he tells Timothy this in 2 Timothy 1.5 in the Amplified. I remember your sincere and unqualified faith, the surrendering of your entire self to God in Christ with confident trust in his power, wisdom, and his goodness which first lived in the heart of your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And Paul says, Timothy, I am confident that it is in you as well. Paul's raising up this new leader. He goes, man, your grandma had it. Your mom had it. I've seen the trust. I've seen the confidence. Timothy, continue walking out and trusting God in everything. And man, you read on Timothy, became one of the greatest leaders Starting churches and having revivals and doing some great things because he kept his trust in God. As we're closing tonight, I want us to practice these prayers. You're at your home right now. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes for a second. Just bow your head and close your eyes for a minute. I want you to ask God, say, God, help me to trust in you. When things are not making sense right now. Lord, I put my trust in you, God. I don't know how it's going to turn out. But Lord, I trust in you. Lord, I don't know how it's all going to pan out. I don't know how from A to B, how it's going to work out. But Lord, I surrender what I don't understand right now. You're at home right now. Just do that for a second. Can you say this? Lord, I surrender what I don't understand, God. Help me, Lord, to follow you and obey you no matter what, God. My trust is in you and you alone. I know there's divine help coming. I want you to say that you're at home right now. Say it. I know there's divine help coming. I know the miraculous hand of God is, is here in my house. I know the miraculous hand is on my kids. 
My kids are acting foolish right now, but they will serve the Lord. God, I thank you and I surrender my children to you. And Lord, I give you the things that I can't control, God. I want you to pray this. Lord, I give it to you. The things I can't control, Lord, I give it to you. I surrender it to you, God. If you're sick today, call upon God. Say, God, I surrender this sickness to you. You're dealing with coronavirus right now. So I, I command this coronavirus to leave my body. I declare the miraculous hand of God in my body right now. Taking out this virus, taking out this cancer, taking out this sickness. Father, we thank you. We love you, Jesus. You're at home right now. Just spend another 30 seconds in prayer and begin to surrender everything to the Lord right now. Say, God, I surrender it to you, Jesus. I surrender my family to you, God. I trust in you, God. Father, I thank you. I love you and I worship you. I worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes. You're in your home right now. Begin to worship just for a few minutes. Just worship God. Yes, you are good, Lord. Yes. You're good, Lord. I put my trust in you, God. Nothing is making sense, Lord, but your word says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You are my fortress. You're the one I can run to. You're my safety, God. You're the one that doesn't let us down, God. I place my faith in you, Jesus. Place your faith in God right now. Place your faith in the Lord right now. If you had your trust and faith in different areas, say, God, forgive me for putting my trust in my money. Forgive me for putting my trust in my business. Lord, I put my trust in you, God. Yes, you are good, Lord. Yes. Now you're at home right now. You're watching. Let's surrender our lives to Jesus. Maybe you're watching us tonight. You're not saved. You're not born again. Let me ask you the most important question anybody could ever ask you. If this were your last day on earth, where would you go? If this were your last day on earth, where would you go? Have you surrendered everything to God? You're saying, Pastor, I don't know if I died today. I don't know where I'd go. I'm not right with God. But man, I need to, I want to surrender everything to God. I want to put my faith in God. If that is you, bow your head and close your eyes. I repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, I surrender everything to you. I place my faith in you, Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. I repent of all the wrong that I've done. Jesus, come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. Today, I am saved. Today, I am born again. And help me, God, to place my trust in you. In all circumstances, in all walks of life, I place my trust in you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer of surrenderance and, man, God is with you, God is for you, today you're saved. If you just said that last prayer with us, go to igotsaved.com. igotsaved.com. To walk you through some easy steps to help you with your walk with God. To help you in your discipleship process now. Because your next step is starting at the way. Even if you're watching us right now from another state, you can go on the app and you can sign up right there for discipleship. Even if you went, we have somebody right now in Arizona and she went through our discipleship process. She just got baptized here I think a few weeks ago. But on the app, she's in Arizona. And she's also on a power of 12. So again, go on the app, sign up for discipleship, go to igotsaved.com. I want to help you with your walk with God. You guys, next Wednesday, impartation. Pastor Marco kicks it off. We are live in person. Next Wednesday, we're here. Thursday, we're here with Bishop Bronner, live in person. Friday, Pastor Obed, we are live in person. And it's Sunday the 31st, Dr. Dave Martin. Man, it's going to be an awesome week. We love you guys. Trusting in God. 
when things are not making sense. I love you guys. Have a great night. We'll see you on Sunday. For some of those, we're live in person this Sunday. God bless you guys.